Did you wake up today and check the news? Because just a few hours ago, more precisely at 1018, the earth shook in Japan. And look, this wasn't just a little tremor. It was an earthquake with a magnitude of 6.2 on the moment magnitude scale that hit the western coast of the country in the provinces of Shimane and Totori. And you know what makes this even more impressive? In the following hours, 21 more aftershocks rattled the same region. Let me explain what's happening there and why scientists are monitoring this 24 hours a day. The epicenter was detected at just 6.2 miles, 10 kilometers deep, which in geology we classify as a shallow earthquake. Think about it. The closer to the surface, the stronger the feeling of the tremor. People who were in the cities of Matsue, Yasugi, and Sakaiminato felt this proximity firsthand. The Japan Meteorological Agency recorded an intensity of 5 plus on the Japanese Shindo scale, which is the scale they use there to measure how strongly the ground shakes in each location. And look, 5 plus on a scale that goes up to 7 is a lot. At this level, heavy furniture falls, drivers have difficulty maintaining control of their vehicles, and buildings start to sway in a way that you clearly notice. Now, before you think it's just another earthquake in Japan, let me tell you why this specific event is drawing so much attention. First, the Shimane region isn't known for earthquakes this strong. Second, the 21 aftershocks that followed, including one with a magnitude of 5.1 just 19 minutes after the main tremor, show that the Earth is still adjusting. And third, man, when you have a shallow earthquake like this, um, the energy propagates much more intensely through nearby areas. The images that circulated on NHK, the Japanese public broadcaster, show power lines swinging violently and buildings moving, news anchors wearing helmets while doing live coverage. And look, I spent the last few hours immersed in official data from the United States Geological Survey, the Japan Meteorological Agency, and European Seismic Institutes, and there's a pattern here that we need to pay attention to. Now let me explain the geological context of this region, because understanding the why makes all the difference. Japan, as you've probably heard, sits right on top of four giant tectonic plates. It's like living in a house built exactly where four properties meet, except these properties are in constant motion. The Shimane region is on the western edge of what geologists call the Pacific Ring of Fire. That name isn't random, man. It's literally a belt of volcanoes and seismic zones that encircles the Pacific Ocean. Approximately 90% of the world's earthquakes happen in this region. Think about the dimension of that for a second. 90%. But here's the detail that particularly interested me. The western coast of Japan, where Shimane and Totori are located, isn't the most seismically active area. The eastern coast, which faces the Pacific, is where we normally see the major events. That's where the magnitude 9.0 earthquake happened in March 2011, the one that generated the devastating tsunami and caused the Fukushima nuclear crisis. Approximately 18,500 people experienced loss of life in that event. So when the western coast trembles with this intensity, seismologists pay extra attention. According to Professor Yoshihiro Matsumoto, a seismology specialist from the University of Tokyo who gave an interview to the Japan Times early today, this specific region of Shimane has a complex geological history. There are several smaller faults intertwined there, and when one of them moves, it can trigger movement in others. It's like an underground domino effect. And look, there's an important historical precedent we need to mention. In October 2000, a magnitude 7.3 earthquake hit the neighboring province of Totori, reaching intensity 6 on the Shindo scale. It was one of the most significant events of that decade in the region. 25 years later, we're seeing robust seismic activity again in this same area. Coincidence? Scientists don't really like that word. They prefer to talk about tectonic energy accumulation and seismic cycles. And you know what else impressed me in the data I analyzed? The depth of 6.2 miles, 10 kilometers. Let me give you a perspective on this. The Earth's crust averages 18.6 to 31 miles, 30 to 50 kilometers, thick on continents. When you have an earthquake at just 6.2 miles, 10 kilometers deep, it's happening right in the upper part of that crust. It's like, imagine the earth is a multi-layered cake. This earthquake happened right in the frosting of the cake, you know? That's why the sensation was so intense for those on the surface. The United States Geological Survey estimates that approximately 21.1 million people in two different countries, Japan and South Korea, may have felt this earthquake to some degree. 
220,000 people were in areas where the tremor was classified as strong on the modified Mercalli intensity scale. About 2,600 people experienced the highest level of vibration, classified as very strong. Now let's talk about the aftershocks, because this is a fundamental aspect to understanding the current risk. In the first seven hours after the main tremor, 21 aftershocks were detected. The largest of them, with a magnitude of 5.1, happened at 10.37 a.m. local Japanese time. That's exactly 19 minutes after the main tremor. And look, when you have such a strong aftershock so quickly, it indicates there's still a lot of energy being released in the region. The Japan Meteorological Agency issued an alert that seems very important to share with you. They said, and I'll quote here, Remain vigilant for earthquakes with seismic intensity 5 or higher during the next week especially in the next two or three days. Man, when an official agency with decades of experience in seismic monitoring makes an alert like this, we listen. They're not being alarmist. They're being realistic based on historical patterns of how earthquakes behave. So, what were the practical impacts of this earthquake? Let's go to the verified facts. Five people were sent to hospitals in Shimane and Totori, according to NHK reports. As of now, there's no confirmation of casualties, which is, honestly, a relief. Some buildings suffered structural damage, especially in Matsue and Yasugi. The railway transport company JR West immediately suspended services of the Sanyo Shinkansen bullet train between Shinosaka and Hakata stations. The reason? A power outage between Aoi and Tokoyama stations, probably caused by the earthquake. Services were normalized only at 1 p.m. local time, which means thousands of passengers were stranded for almost three hours. And there's the nuclear issue. The Shimane nuclear power plant, operated by Chugoku Electric Power, is just 19.9 miles, 32 kilometers, from the epicenter. Think about what that means. A nuclear plant, 19.9 miles, 32 kilometers, from a magnitude 6.2 earthquake. The good news is that Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority confirmed there were no irregularities at the plant. Reactor number two, which had been reactivated in December 2024 after being shut down since the Fukushima crisis in 2011, continued operating normally. The automatic monitoring systems worked perfectly, and safety teams conducted detailed checks of all facilities. But look, after Fukushima, any earthquake near a nuclear plant in Japan is taken extremely seriously. The lessons learned from that tragic event completely transformed nuclear safety protocols in the country. Today, plants have redundant cooling systems, multiple emergency generators, and constant evacuation drills. And speaking of preparation, one thing that always impresses me about Japan is how ready they are for these events. Their earthquake early warning system is the most advanced in the world. When the first signs of the tremor were detected by seismographs seconds before the main wave arrived, alerts were automatically sent to cell phones, TV broadcasts were interrupted, and train systems began to decelerate. Those seconds make a difference. They're seconds that allow people to take shelter, protect their heads, move away from windows. It's the difference between being prepared and being caught by surprise. 